What's going on, y'all? What's going on, y'all? What's going on? Look at my curl. Damn, bitch. I gotta get gutter for this video. Come on now. Cooperate. Love and Hip Hop premiere. Is this season three ATL? Bitch, who cares? It's Love and Hip Hop Atlanta. Okay? Look, bitch. Let me just tell you this. <sighs> Jocelyn already made me laugh the first few seconds she was on screen. We got new characters. Scrappy, not Scrappy, but uh, Scrappy Wit, Bambi, uh, Kurt Bitch Ass. He's still there. Young Jock's supposed to be on here. And Waka Flocka, uh, Waka Flocka Fame. And um, Deb Abney, his mom. Bitch, we start this season off. This episode off. Stevie J is sitting there at the piano in the middle of this big ass white room in this big ass goddamn mansion that he claims. It's 18,000 square foot feet that he claims that it's his. I didn't upgrade it in life. You know, I got this big old mansion that's making me feel presidential. I'm sitting here like, hmm, VH1 let you rent that out. No, VH1 rented that shit out for you because, boo, you wouldn't be going to court for over, over a million dollars in uh, goddamn child support to all your goddamn baby mamas. Okay. And IRS and all that shit, bitch, please. And then he was like, I got my Puerto Rican princess. And here, right on cue, Jocelyn comes down. You ready for breakfast, puppy? I said, okay, bitch. You know, she looking cute. So come to find out, they supposedly married. We all heard that stuff. And she was like, basically, she was like, basically, you know, she won't. So, yes, I'm Mrs. Jordan, and I want my flowers. Where is my mama Cetus with her flowers? I said, the way she said flowers was like florals. And I'm sitting here like, girl. Here we go. I said, eat not C-H words, but she sounded like me. How I be trying to talk sometimes, and my shit be getting tied up. Where my floor was at? And my masitas with my floras. I said, it was like, I'm doing pretty good for a girl from the streets of Puerto Rico. I said, okay, bitch, you do it. All right. Y'all ain't really doing it, but you know, you can go ahead and false flag this shit because we know. We know. She want her flowers. She want her wedding. She want all that shit because they basically had a courthouse wedding or whatever. And he like, well, you know, I'm finna have a birthday party. Both our birthdays is like a day after each other. So let's turn up and have a post-marital um, birthday part, uh, party or whatever. That's some cheap ass shit. But okay, you do what you gotta do. Moving on from that shit. We got Kurt and Rashida. Kurt, if y'all, um, bitch, if y'all ever seen my videos from, well, well, they're gone to oblivion now. Jesus Christ. I had some good ass materials. Like, I had some. <sighs> Bring it back, Ashley. Bring it back. Y'all remember that song? Take it back, ho. Take it back, ho. Take it back, ho. Take it back. 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 Girl shit. Stop playing. Um, anyway, I should have been born down south. I really should have. Just as ratchet. But, no. No offense, but y'all know. We got Kurt and Rashida. And y'all know how we all felt about Kurt last season. He was the bitch ass of the bitch asses of the pussies of the goddamn season last season. He dropped and cut off his balls and replaced it with a damn vagina. The whole storyline be between Rashida and Kurt was surrounding the fact that Rashida got pregnant. He didn't want to claim the baby. He acting all out, talking about he got personal stuff going on. I think he cheated on her. And she's still with that motherfucker. Okay, so they still in the house. She had the little baby boy, Carter. He talking about some. you know, at first I didn't want the baby. I was not too sure about having another kid because I got five kids already. Who the fuck problem is that? Yours. So... He's still taking care of his responsibilities, but they sleeping in different rooms and talking about the marriage can go either way. And, you know, Rashida was like it was difficult giving birth because she had to have a C-session because of the, the stuff that was going on. And she wound up had, catching pneumonia while in the hospital, so she had to stay in the hospital for another week. That does happen because my mama, when she had my youngest sister, she uh, gave a vaginal birth, actually. And she went home a couple of days later and she had to go back to the hospital because she caught pneumonia in the same. See? Shit women go through. Then we move on to the fakest of the fakest scenes at the very beginning. Mimi 
in her little studio bedroom apartment in her bathroom with this tiger print leopard round with her chi chis out and everything you know trying to display the fact that she got new boobs and shit she just it don't look like the same Mimi from the first two seasons it looked like a more sexed up ratified I don't know something just looks off and different from her it's like she's more out there now as when she was with Stevie J she was kind of subdued a little bit if y'all get what I'm saying and she Fixing her jewelry and letting us know that she got a whole bunch of gold jewelry. Gold. And, you know, it's like, okay, cool. So, I hear that um, Stevie J didn't uh, wife that little thing. Okay, that's fine because I'm done with the stuff with Stevie J. Okay, be done with it. I'm with Nico. Yes, we together. And even though my friends think he um bad for me, I'm having the time of my life. Best sex ever. And I'm happy and all this shit. I'm like, okay, here come Nico. Nico just looks disgusting. He turns my stomach. His face looks like something is, like, he looks like he got it. And y'all know what I'm talking about, it. He got the package or something. What is that lesion on his face? It's just, and probably a birthmark, but it just looks disgusting. And he, his face is too small. His head too small for the rest of his body. He come in jiggling her tits, and I was like, ugh, okay, you know. I like the way that this accentuates your tits. Okay. They go in the bedroom. She talking pillow talk. You know, I just love you. And you like the best thing that ever happened to me. Because you got me doing everything that I never thought that I'd do. You know, we fucking on camera and all this stuff. And he was like, but you know you like my best friend. Oh, but I never had anybody tell me that. I'm sitting here like this. Why don't you dim those lights and turn that red light on and let's see what that do. I said, uh, it just seems so nasty. So goddamn nasty. So then we get back to the new people we introduced to Waka Faka Fame. Okay. But let me just say this. <sighs> Tammy is his girlfriend of three years. They took a long break. They already had trouble in a relationship. You've been together three years, so what is a long break? A year, a couple of months or so? He's still cheating on you with other chicks, because obviously that's why y'all been taking breaks, and he already said that he put you through some shit because of, you know, the shit that was going on with the girls and all that stuff, because he's a rapper and that's what they do. Okay, and you getting jealous about the fact that, you know, some girls come to the back and he like, well, bitch, I can't hit with you. And I'm sitting here like, I don't know. I don't know if Waka, I got to keep watching because y'all know I'm watching and recording and you know how I do. But um, we just got to see how this play out with Waka. Tammy, she seems like, I don't know right now. She seems kind of naive. And here go Waka, you know, uh... I had my break, and that's come to show me that you the only thing that I want. Ain't nothing out there for me. And every time I look at you, shit, it's like I'm looking at a new person. Okay, you better spit them lines and try to get that girl in line with you. But I don't know. I don't know. We're going to have to wait on that one and see how this shit plays out. But come on, Tammy, let's wake up. You, you're dating a rapper, so anything is bound to happen. It's just like dating anybody that's in the spotlight. They throw the puss at them. You, you, especially these rappers and singers and shit, they get up on stage and they're going to throw that shit at them. You saw them white girls on that stage too. You know, they don't care. Anybody don't care. And I'm not just saying white girls because that's what was on the stage. It was white girl. But you know, they don't give no, they, they don't give zero fucks about your relationship. And if he entertaining, he don't either. So then we have Scrappy and fucking Bambi. Bambi is making her way through VH1 reality TV shows, okay? She didn't came from Basketball Wives LA season 2 to best on um, to uh 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 what is this? Love and Hip Hop Atlanta season 3. She fucking with Bam uh uh Scrappy. They've been together for like 3 4 months. He thinking, mm, I'm trying to see if I can make her the one into a relationship stuff. They playing basketball and shit. And I'm like Next, so then you have Rashid, not Rashida, Arian, 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 who gives a fuck, bitch. She is cute to me, and I already look. Y'all already know. Go back. No, you can't go back, bitch. God damn, it gets me every time. 
Well, if you go back in your memory, jog your memory a little bit if you've been with me for a while. I kind of, we all kind of said that, you know, Arian gives you a little dyke tease. She do. She give you femme dyke tease, okay? And I've always, I was like, she cute as fuck. And something about her just tell me she would go down on some cat in a minute. Like, she would munch on that carpet in a minute. Like, and then she came out in the end of the last season, and we was like, see, bitch, we ain't surprised, but thank you. You know, thanks for confirming it for us. You know, so she basically said, because her, Erica, and Mimi is out. And they meeting up. I guess it's the first time seeing each other in a minute. She basically like, you know, she got a new boot thing. And hopefully this one is the one. And I said, oh, you got you a girlfriend. Now, is it a girly girl or is it a, a stud girl or whatever? That's what I want to know. I want to know if they're going to show her. Hmm. Hmm. I would like to see Arian when I go down to Atlanta this week, uh, this month, um, next month. I really would. I just want to look at her. Look, shut up. Shut up. Don't even judge. Don't even judge. But anyway, Erica got her little dude, you know, a model named O'Shea or whatever. And I seen the picture of him. And Boo Boo is, pss, talk about a step up from Scrappy. He look cultured. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Don't judge me. You know, he look better than Scott. Uh, he look ten times better than little Scrappy, okay? And, you know, Stevie, they talking about Stevie J and, um... <clears throat> Jocelyn's love relationship. Mimi, like, I don't know if they really married because I couldn't find no um, marriage certificate. I couldn't find it, no marriage records or anything like that. And I'm like, damn, so you searching? Okay, you know, if you don't give a fuck about them, what you searching for? And she was like, they supposedly in this big old house. Who gives a shit? Then Arian comes out and say, well, I got an invitation to go to some party that they throwing at the house. So do you mind if I go? I don't give a fuck what you do. I was like, hmm, the tone of your voice said otherwise. But, you know, she was like, I'm going to go. I'm going to bring you back some deets and everything and see what's going on. And it is what it is. So, um, that's what's going to happen with that. And then that's when Mimi drops the bomb that she's still fucking with Nico. Everybody like, bitch, what? You know, something about him just seems, uh, he's just corny. He's just not, he's an opportunist. He's a bad guy. And then they, she started talking about sex tapes. And then they was like, why the fuck would you do that? It was like, you done it, he done it. It was like, because what if something happened that you break up and all of a sudden them shits leak? See, your friends, you should have listened to your friends and you should have went back and destroyed each copy. But no, you didn't. You didn't. You're stupid, Mimi. You're talking about some. There's a difference between being digmatized and having and having good sex or some shit like that. You could pull out any type of excuse to justify this shit. It won't work, Mimi. It really won't work. You're just stupid. We already know that. So, um, Rashida meets up with Deb Apney. <laughs> She sound like, oh my God, she sound like, she sound like she smoked 15 packs a day for the past 20 years, bitch. You know, you, oh my God, go look at the PJs, right? And you know, the dude that be on there, and he be like, da, 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 da. Okay, that ain't funny, but it's funny. That's what she, girl, her voice, her voice. I can't imagine somebody, I cannot imagine a dude fucking that. I just... Oh my god, no no disrespect to her because I actually like that, but damn bitch, your voice. I'm mean, like, clear it out, bitch, clear it out. <clears throat> Suss and cuts or something. Bitch, whatever. Her, Tammy, and Rashida meet up. Tammy telling her about the wedding, Deb Abney. Deb talking about, you know, this is my wedding and I'm going um I'm doing this, okay? I don't care if nobody shows up, but I'm doing this. I was like, go ahead and do what you know. At least she is supportive of her uh, son. And he was like, you know, when they went through their stuff and they broke up and he was in a bad place or whatever, but he was like, Ma, I love her. And she was like, go get her, son. There you go. And I was like, okay, you know. Because Deb looked like the type that would be like, you know, screening these girls when they come up into Walker's life and be all up on their ass. But she looked like, she kind of give you, at first, the Mama D impression. You know how Mama D don't like no motherfucking body that come up in scrappy life unless it's somebody that she put there. But she's the complete opposite. Looks can be deceiving. And I love that. And um, Tammy Boo, 
Y'all been engaged for seven months and he still ain't got y'all ring. But she was like, where the ring at? She was like, we got matching tattoos. He's still working on getting that together. Then they talk about Rashida and Kirk's uh, situation. And <clears throat> what happened between them. Uh, What happened between uh, Kirk and uh, Rashida with the baby? And Rashida was basically like, you know, it's days that I look at that motherfucker and I just want to slap the shit out of him. I want to stab him. I want to smother him. Because all I can see is that bitch up in the goddamn hot tub with the motherfucking women and all that shit. And he was like, but then she goes and say, you know, he's like a team player because... When she got sick, she got sick the, the, the next day after she gave birth to Carter. She couldn't hold him or do anything, but Kurt was there, and he was doing his responsibility and taking up. See, something about it just, about that storyline is kind of fishy. Like, is this really real? We still trying to figure that out. But how you going to be there and still act the asshole and think that the baby still ain't yours? And Rashida was like, how you trying to see if I'm cheating on you when you the one that cheated on me? And that shit is on national TV. Come on now. You covering and compensating for something. And and, and, and Dad Babney was like, he not your, not no team player. That's your husband. Y'all need to fix that and work that. I don't like the fact that they trying to tell them, oh, 17 plus years and, you know, Y'all y'all need to fix it and keep that shit together. That man publicly humiliated the shit out of her. And he's going to continue to do that on this season. And it's like, yeah, she can consider 17 years of that marriage and, and respect for that relationship. But he don't. He obviously don't. If he going to put all this out here and act the ass the way he do and act out the way he do and disrespect his wife the way he do. Obviously, he don't know his wife for 17 years to even do some shit like that. I would have been left that motherfucker. But then we move on to this staged ass scene. This is Love and Hip Hop, okay? This is a VH1 reality show, 9 out of 10s. About a good 85% of that shit is staged. This is one of those things. Nico waiting on Mimi. Mimi shows up and she's like, hey, how you doing? He was like, what's up? How you doing, babe? I'm just blessed, you know. You're like the best thing that ever came into my life. And, you know, ever since we've been together. And I've just been so happy. And, you know, dealing with the past four years with the mess with Stevie. And it's like a breath of fresh air. And I'm just like, ah. And I was like, damn, um, Mimi, he just asked, baby, how you doing? And, you know, he was like, Mimi got it in her head probably that we coming up here for something else. But uh, I got to drop the bomb on this hoe. So he was like... So remember when we was coming back from the Bahamas and I told you that the bag got stolen? Well, what I didn't tell you was that my camera was up in there and we exposed. <laughs> what? What do you mean we're exposed? Look, bitch. All of us. It's all exposed. I was like, oh, okay. That's how they had it blurred out too. Just like that. It's on Media Takeout. Media Takeout is like the biggest urban blog on the world. And now everybody's going to see it. My, what? I just don't understand. And then look at the blowback that Stevie going to do. This ain't even got shit to do with Stevie. Yes, it do because this is my daughter's father. I was like, girl, it just seems so damn fake. I said them tears came out of nowhere too quick. I mean, there's a stage of shock that would have went through me first. And then when I saw them screen caps... And then when I saw something else, then I probably would have let it go and been like, oh, shit, it hit me. Then them tears would have come. Okay, maybe I'm different. Maybe I'm different. But goddamn, bitch, get your acting still together. And I'm just like, you didn't get, somebody didn't steal your bag. And then try to make some money off of it. He literally said, you know, let's just jump on this opportunity to, um, I guess, make money off of it and sell it. I was like. You're a little bit too eager to do this, or you already thought about this, or you exposed your, them yourself. We already know. That's what everybody feels. We feel that he put this shit out there, and she dumb as shit for listening. Stupid. Then we finally get to meet the queen diva of bullshit her goddamn self, Mama D. Scrappy, okay, they asked some like, club or a bar or whatever scrappy comes up with bambi and they talking mind you bambi just dead in there like she ain't even there like she just playing the atmosphere and then scrappy was like what's up mama you know i want to introduce you to bambi yeah i know about bambi 
Mm-hmm. It was like, you know, this my new thing. Yeah, I heard she was out there in L.A. fucking around with some other people. Oh, so what you trying to say, I'm a hoe? I mean, I'm just saying you fucking around with other people and Scrappy is Scrappy. He got other eggs in the basket because, you know, you ain't the only one. He got to keep his option open because he's the prince and I'm the queen of this castle. I was like, goddamn, Mama D, you came out pretty strong, but I mean, it's fucking Mama D. Bambi sitting there with a dick look on her face like, what the fuck? What the fuck? You know, so we couldn't expect nothing less of Mama D but her bullshit, her shenanigans. And then we get to this scene with Scrappy, not Scrappy, but Charlene, who is Rashida's mama. Charlene, Charlene is my grandmother's name, but her name is Charlene. You know, them southern ass folks. That's how you know. So she was like holding Carter. They was looking at baby pictures and saying, oh, you look just like him when he was a baby and all this stuff and yada, yada, yada. She kissing on the baby. Here come Kurt being the bitch that he is. Oh, you kissing him in the mouth. Oh, why you going to bring them old ass germs in here to a newborn baby? I kiss that motherfucker if I want to. I always do. <laughs> bitch, what? I'm sitting here like, over oh, the baby, y'all finna do this shit? You know, stop it. They can't have a chill moment for one second, and it's just disgusting because Kurt just got to find any reason to, you know, it seems like any reason to bitch and moan. It's a lot of people who kiss their babies in the mouth, who still kiss their kids in the mouth. I don't see nothing wrong with it because it's a harmless thing until it looks kind of weird. And it's a difference, you know, and I didn't see nothing wrong with that. But, you know, he could have came if he felt it was about the germ stuff. He could have came at it a different way and not with that tone and all that shit. But you get no respect from them because of the shit and the bullshit that you're doing. Because then you was like, at first, now you want to act like it's your baby? Oh, I still believe that it ain't my baby. But I'm, I still got my doubts. I'm sitting here like, what? He talking about some, we been distant. So, hey, I still got my doubts about if it's my baby or not. Nigga, it's your baby. Stop fucking playing. Kurt is just... <sighs> he looks like the back of a knee. Okay, just stop fucking playing. He irks me. Oh, <laughs> my God. Y'all did not tell me that Bambi actually rolled the fuck up on that bike. She rolled up not on a motorcycle, not on a moped, not on a fucking scooter, but an actual Huffy Schwinn two-wheel bike with a basket, a Dora the Explorer fucking basket. I'm like, where the fuck is book bag at? Where is backpack, okay? I'm sitting here like, you gotta be out your goddamn mind. You rolled up on a two-wheeler for real, like a real bicycle. I like the fucking dad. Really, Bambi? Really? That's why Mama D ain't really got no respect for you right about now. Because, <laughs> bitch, I would have said, huh, where the fuck your car at? Unless you getting some exercise, I can understand that. Or you live right next door. But, bitch, come on. Then you trying to talk to Scrappy about what's these other eggs and, oh, you don't, because I don't, I'm, I'm concerned because you don't tell me that you love me. And I'm just trying to figure out where we at. What, you love me? Yeah, I love you. But he was like, I ain't right that th at this moment because I've been through some shit. So, you know, it is what it is. So you just in strong like of me. I was like, Bambi, it's only been three to four months. Chill the fuck out. Who gives a shit about them right about now? Let's get on to this scene with my um, Stevie J, Jocelyn. They at their little joint birthday party. Ariana and Erica is there. My thing is... I, I was confused as to why they got invited, knowing that that's Mimi's friends. And I was just, maybe I missed something, but okay. And um, y'all remember when Erica and Jocelyn got into it that first season and they fought? I can't remember if they kind of made up the second season, but hey, it, fuck it. They was there. And then Arian being Arian, did y'all see when Stevie had that piece of cake in his mouth and then he spit it out and she took it and ate it? I said, y'all is nasty. They do some nasty shit like that. But what? this is what we come to expect between them. And Arian questioning Jocelyn about her wedding date. And, you know, she did kind of have to think about it. She was like at the end of July. You know, like July 29th. Yeah, July 29th. So you've been married and you don't know what your date is? Why the fuck you questioning me? See, Arian is messy. That's the only thing that, you know... Mm, makes me go uh, about her because she instigates stuff. But she did say she was coming there to get the deets for um, Mimi. And I was like, okay, you're trying to be a good friend, but you still being messy as fuck. 
And, you know, that pissed off um, Jocelyn. She goes tell Stevie. Stevie was like, don't fucking worry about it. This is our day. Just have fun. These two brides come up in there with this pole. This pole. And she was like, oh, shit, I got a stripper pole. Who said this? And at first, she was happy as fuck. But then when she found out who it was from, she was like, so this bitch Mimi going to send me a pole. Because she did say she was going to send her a pole for her birthday. And... He was like, you got the bitch, the baby mama sending gifts, and then her two lackeys can't even send me no gift. I was like, so what you really mad at? You know, Steve, uh, J at that point, Jocelyn was like, fuck this shit, I'm gone. Stevie J didn't leave behind her. When he finally come out, Jocelyn had already pulled off. He was like, fuck it, bitch, you gone. Let's go to Magic City. Him and Benzino, no neck Benzino. Benzino, you are almost 50 years old, you and Stevie J, and y'all are still saying turn up. Something is not right with that. Okay, stop it. So, Jocelyn at the crib, Stevie J come in. She pissed off. Bitch, why the fuck you go to Magic City? What you up there on some 18-year-old? You know, I, I'm, I'm tired of this shit and all this stuff. You know, this is my party and yada, yada, yada. And then you tell your baby mama that's going to bring this stuff to me. And, and, and she going to give me this pole. She going to give me this pole. Tell her I need a longer pole because my ceilings are high. My ceilings are high. I said, you better go the fuck off, Jocelyn. You better go off. But you better shut the fuck up, okay, too. And, you know... She was just in her feelings about everything that was going on. And she was like, I'm tired of this shenanigans. Shenanigans. I said, bitch, it's shenanigans. She said shenanigans. I said, come on, girl. Come on, girl. Here we go again with E9 C8. Rosetta Stone has been lacking. But after that, you know, she was just in her feelings about the whole thing. And that hair flip. Girl, you know, let me tell you something. I think Mimi is kind of jealous. Or she feeling kind of salty because she's been in Stevie J life for so long. And she didn't get that ring like she wanted. Jocelyn got it. Because she claimed as Jocelyn came and they got engaged two weeks after they met. Bullshit, but I mean, okay. And, you know, she got what she didn't get. And now they living in this rented ass, big ass mount mansion. And look at Mimi living up in an apartment with Nico. A dorm size apartment with Nico. Studio at the most. Hey, it is what it is. Loving Hip Hop Atlanta. These reviews ain't going to be this long like this no more. It's just that um, I just felt like doing it like this. But, you know, it is what it is. But this is the first episode, so I just want to go into detail a little bit. So, you know, everybody cool with everybody. We still haven't got introduced to Young Jock and his storyline. But... I'm looking forward to the season. Y'all tell me how y'all felt about it. And if y'all looking forward to the season. And I will see y'all later.